Welcome to Ramcast, a Christian podcast designed to encourage believers in their walk with God and to lead the unsaved to Jesus Christ. Hello and welcome to the Ramcast podcast from Ram Productions. Today, I am doing a solo podcast in the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, if you listened to the last podcast episode, I interviewed my youth pastor, Pastor John Pate. Uh, It was my first interview podcast um, since I started Ramcast, and overall, I thought it went pretty well. Uh, Pastor John, of course, he was wonderful. He was great. Uh, He's done podcasts before. In fact, he's probably done a lot more podcasts than I have up to this point. But yeah, no, it was it was a great time. Um, I was pretty nervous, to be honest. I made some comments that like that didn't make maybe a lot of sense or sounded a little bit weird or corny. Uh, I repeated myself by saying that it was really, really good. What he was saying was really good. If you listen to the podcast, I say that about like, I don't know, six times or something. Uh, But anyways, we had a good time, and uh, I plan on doing more podcasts uh, like that in the future. Thank you again to Pastor John for hopping on to the podcast. So today, like I said earlier, we are in the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, for some background here, I've been reading through Ecclesiastes in my personal devotion time um, this summer in 2024. And I'm not going to lie... Ecclesiastes is a little bit of a strange book in the Bible. It's kind of like a contrast to the book of Proverbs. Um, One of my favorite passages in Proverbs is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. I need that reminder often. Because I'm not very good at trusting God. I'm more of a uh, control freak. I hate the unknown, and I'm just like, I need to know what's happening. I need to be in control. And God's taught me as I get older um, just how to rest in Him. So anyways, a lot of people know the book of Proverbs. Uh, You probably have different favorite passages in Proverbs. But Proverbs, one of the themes of Proverbs is that if you're good, good things are going to happen to you, generally speaking. If you're bad, bad things are going to happen to you, generally speaking. But Ecclesiastes is kind of like this contrast to the book of Proverbs, where it's like you make wise decisions, you work hard, you're a good person, and then you die. And then we got this other person who, he's bad, I mean, he's broken the law, he makes foolish decisions, he's greedy, And he dies too. We all die. And it's kind of a depressing book, especially at the beginning. Uh, But it comes to the conclusion at the end to fear God and keep his commandments. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Today's passage in Ecclesiastes is in chapter 8, verses 16 through 17. Here's what it says. When I applied my heart to know wisdom... And to see the business that is done on earth, how neither day nor night do one's eyes see sleep. Then I saw all the work of God, that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out, even though a wise man claims to know it, he cannot find it out. So the first point I want to make here is that wisdom, our wisdom, and our knowledge is simply not enough. Which frankly, the rest of the world, or at least a good portion of the world, would disagree with. They would say, well, I mean, You know, there's there's this popular theme of it's your truth. You know, your truth may not be my truth, but, you know, we'll all just end up in this happy place. Everything will be fine. And the Bible 
looking through the Bible's lens, that's just simply not true. That's not right. Not all, all roads don't lead to God. There's only one way to be saved from your sin, and that is through Jesus Christ. And that is the narrow way. And the narrow way leads to God and leads to eternal life in heaven. But the wide way, the way that is easy to go through and is just the more common way, leads to death and damnation and hell. And that's just simply the truth of the Bible. So going back to this passage here, it says at the end of verse 17, However much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. The wisest person on earth. I mean, you could think of some wise or maybe smart people here on earth. Some names that come to mind might be like a Bill Gates, a Elon Musk. Maybe in the past it was some famous philosopher. But the fact is, even though a wise man claims to know that he's got the answer, it's going to fix everything, this is the answer that everybody needs, he cannot find it out. Only God has the answers. Now, I want to take you to the book of Job. At the beginning of the book, it talks about his abundance and riches and wealth and family, everything seemed to be going so well, but then trials hit, some extremely hard trials that frankly, pretty much and none of us will ever experience the trials that Job had to go through. And he questions God to a certain extent. He's like, Lord, I, why? I was a good person. Why am I suffering through all of this? And he it's like, you know, I might as well just die. Why am I even here? This is so horrible. I don't understand. And it's very interesting at the end of the book of Job, how the Lord responds. Here's what the Lord says, starting in chapter 38 of Job. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you will make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, and when I made clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther. And here shall your proud waves be stayed. The point the Lord is making here, the point God is making is, Job, you were not there when I created the world. You do not have omniscient understanding. You do not know all. Only I know all. Now, when you head to Job chapter 42, starting in verse 1, This is Job's response. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know here. I will speak, I will question you, and you make it known to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. So here is point two that I want to get across. God 
is powerful. God is in control of the entire universe. No wonder us little, tiny, seemingly insignificant beings here on planet Earth, of course, we cannot find out. We cannot figure out in our head the answers to life on our own. We must look to God. So here's the thing. Are we trusting God? Or are we trying to live life based on our own knowledge? All right. The third point I want to make is God's wisdom is enough. So fear his commandments. I want to take you to the end of the book of Ecclesiastes. Here's what it says in chapter 12, verses 13 through 14. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. So at the end of the day, we must rely on God's wisdom. We must trust that He holds the universe. He holds our lives in His hand. It's only through His Son's sacrifice on the cross, through His death and His resurrection, through repenting of our sin and believing in Jesus Christ and what He did, that we are saved. That's the only way. So, as you live your life, will you live your life based on your own understanding, what you can figure out, what the wealth of the culture and knowledge and whatever the world says, are you going to live your life based on that? Or are you going to live your life based on a perfect, the perfect word of God, the Bible? Well, I hope and pray that you will rest in him today. And I also hope and pray that this podcast was an encouragement for you. I do recommend, if you have not already, to listen to the podcast I did with Pastor John Pate. I'll put the link in the description, and I recommend you check it out. Thanks for listening, and you all have a blessed day. All the glory to God. Thanks for listening. We hope this podcast was a blessing to you. If so, please leave a comment down below. To support us, please subscribe or follow, depending on what platform you're listening to us on.